Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and we will be going through the PE to CE Protocols Basic BGP Configuration Learning Byte. All right, so here is our topology. In the topology, we have a few different things I want to talk about. First, we have our provider routers, and you can see that there's P1, P2, and also P3. Now, we won't be touching that configuration because we'll be doing the majority, or all of our work, really, on PE1 and PE2. Now, those five routers make up the service provider network, and they're a part of AS65512. And then the two PE routers connect to CE1 and CE2. And CE1 uses AS65412, and CE2 uses AS5111. And then you can see the hosts that are connected to uh, CE1 and CE2. You got host 1 that is 10.1.2.1. You have host 2 that is 10.4.1.1. And so you can see the networks they're associated with. So that'll be important because we'll want to exchange those networks through the L3 VPN using BGP as the PE to CE protocol. And one thing to point out as well is the layer three VPN is pretty much functional. The only thing that isn't configured yet is the PE to CE protocol. So we're just going to be focusing on uh, configuring just a basic configuration of BGP as the PE to CE protocol. And something else I want to point out is the connections we have here. We can see that PE1 has a connection with CE1 on the 10.1.0.0/30 subnet, and CE1 uses .1, PE1 uses .2, and then on the other side we have PE2 that uses .1 and .2 of the 10.4. or .1 for CE2 that is the 10.4.0.0/30 subnet. And this is all going to be part of the red VPN that is already partially configured, as I mentioned beforehand. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get this started. All right, so here is the CLI for PE1. Let's go ahead and jump into configuration mode. And let's go to routing instances, red VPN. Here is our partially configured VPN. You can see here we have the route target. Route distinguisher, things like that already configured, as well as the instance type and the CE facing interface. And so, what we need to do now is we need to configure that CE to PE protocol or PE to CE protocol, depending on what perspective you're looking at. And so, let's go ahead and edit protocols, BGP, say group, we'll say PE CE. And then we need to configure the parameters that we have here. We need to set it's going to be an external type and then the peer AS. To make sure we set this to the AS that that site is using, that CE1 is using. So that's 65412. And then we set the neighbor. And this is going to be that interface that CE1 has as points towards PE1. And the IP address on that interface is going to be 10.1.0.1. And that's all we really need to configure. And this is great. This is one of the biggest advantages about using BGP as the PE to CE protocol is we don't have to configure any extra policies to export or redistribute policies. And the thing is, if we were using OSPF as the PE to CE protocol, we would have to configure a policy that would export those OSPF routes into BGP so they could get in. Rather, I mean, export those routes out of BGP into OSPF so they can go from the L3 VPN into the CE device. And so we don't have to do that with BGP and that's great. Saves us some time there. So let's go ahead and commit the configuration, exit to operational mode, and then we'll jump to PE2 and do the same thing just on the other side. So edit routing instances, go to the red VPN. See here, it's all configured except for the PE to CE protocol. Basically do the same thing, just with different parameters. Set type external. And then peer AS is going to be 65111. And then the neighbor, of course, is going to be that IP address is on the CE2 interface that connects with PE2. And that's going to be 10.4.0.1. And that's all we need to do. Let's go ahead and commit the configuration and we'll make sure things work. And so let's go ahead and jump back to PE1. Let's look at the BGP summary. Look at the BGP sessions. And we can see here that we do have an established BGP session with CE1. That looks great. We can see the BGP session with PE2. And we can see there that we are receiving routes from PE2 in the L3 VPN tables. So that looks good. 
So then let's look at those tables. Show route table, say red VPN. And you can see here, great, we do have routes. And we can see the routes we are receiving through BGP. And the first route that we're receiving is from CE1. And then we see other routes here, all these routes that come from CE2. And you can see that they have a VPN label and then an MPLS label. And we are using LDP for the signaling protocol with MPLS. So the VPN and the transport label. And that's perfect. That's what we should be seeing. So we are receiving the correct routes. And we can look at the show route uh, table BGP L3 VPN.0 table. And you can see what we're actually receiving as well, because that's what shows up in that table. You can see here the routes that I think this is the route that represents, yeah, host two, the host two network. We can see here we have the route. And then we have, after that, we have the route distinguisher for PE2. And so that's why we're seeing that there. And then something else we can look at that we can do the show route advertising protocol BGP and see what we're sending towards, let's say the CE1 router. So it's 10.1.0.1. And we see that we are sending those routes that we learned from PE2, we are sending it towards CE1. And something interesting here, you can look at the AS path, you can see that started with, you know, or originated as an internal route. And then the AS path of 65111 was placed on the route. And so 65111 is the AS that CE2 is a part of. And so that's why you see that there. Now this route is kind of interesting. This is the interface route between PE2 and CE1, or excuse me, PE2 and CE2. And the reason why it only shows as internal here is because that route originated within the service provider network. So no other AS pass or no AS pass have been added to that path yet. And so that looks really good. So then we can say, do the PE2 address, which is 172.17.20.6, I believe. And so you can see the, these are the routes from CE1, well, minus this one route. That's the interface route that we're sending towards PE2. And again, this is the interface route between uh, PE1 and CE1. The rest are the routes that we're sending. So we can also change that to receive protocol so we can see what we're receiving. Get a little more information there. And so this is what we're receiving from PE2. And those routes are definitely there. Everything looks good. Okay, so we've been passing routes. Everything looks good. So, but we've only been looking at the control plane. Let's test communication between host one and host two to verify that the forwarding plane is working as well. So let's go ahead and jump to a different device to test that. And here is the customer device. Now this is just a single router that is split up into multiple virtual routers. So what we have to do here, we have to make sure we specify the routing instance when we're pinging. So we'll say ping, say 10.4.1.1 routing instance, we'll say host one. And the communication works there. That's perfect. So we're able to set up BGP, just basic BGP as the PE to CE protocol. And then we're able to test communication, see the routes being passed and things like that. So oh, that does bring us to the end of this learning bite. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.